Hello and welcome back to Bookish and welcome to another one of my 11 list videos. This time it's 11 short classics that people rarely read. Now I should say, when I say these are 11 short classics that people rarely read, it's not that nobody ever reads them. Occasionally some people do and I see them here on booktube and these are oftentimes uh, short classics or classics people kind of around my age in the 50s might have read in college. But without further ado, here we go. Number one are the Theban plays by Sophocles. This is Oedipus, Oedipus Rex, Oedipus at Colonus, uh, and Antigone. These kind of cycle of three plays tell a story which you may think you know uh, well. That's the story of Oedipus. Oedipus kills his father, sleeps with his mother, father's children, is disgraced, uh, you know, cuts out his own eyes, and, you know, tragedy ensues. You know, there's no doubt about it. These are definitely... Uh, tragic plays. Uh, Oedipus at Colonus, he's uh, left behind uh, his kingship at Thebes and there's a civil war between his sons. Uh, Antigone, uh, his daughter, who is kind of with him uh, most of the time, Antigone fought, runs afoul of the new king of Thebes, uh, Creon, uh, for her uh, decision to try to perform funeral rites for one of her dead brothers, and tragedy ensues. You know, it is literally tragedy. Now, I'm going to say this because the next classic I mentioned is also a Greek play. There is an awkwardness, I think, about Greek plays uh, for modern readers, and that is the presence of the chorus. The chorus is kind of this group of people who come along and they represent points of view of uh, maybe the audience, maybe they try to answer questions, maybe they try to highlight things, and it can be a little bit unwieldy, but these are short plays, and they're really powerful, and I think they're well worth reading. I think the Theban plays were written somewhere around 441 BC, so they're the oldest classic on my list. The next classic on my list, number two classic on my list, by the way, these are not ranked in order of greatness. I'm just going through them as I've numbered them, and I've numbered them, you know, chronologically. And number two on my list is Lysistrata by Aristophanes. This is just really good fun. Uh, I don't know how serious we're supposed to take it, but if you don't know the story of Lysistrata, Lysistrata is this incredibly powerful, uh, bold Athenian woman who is tired of the men of Athens uh, being away at war with Sparta, tired of the Peloponnesian War, and her solution to bring an end to the Peloponnesian War is for women to stop having sex with their husbands, uh, that they're going to withhold sex uh, until, you know, peace is, is achieved. Uh, they take over the Parthenon for a while. They have an encounter with a group of kind of angry uh, old men. There are a whole lot of uh, double entendre and kind of ribald jokes. And it just is a lot of fun. Um, again, the chorus part and some of the politics may seem a little bit unwieldy or, un, you know, a little bit hard for us to maybe get a grasp on today. But to me, it's just a, a great deal of fun. And what I would say is, if you think they're talking about what you think they're talking about, they're talking about what you think they're talking about. So at number three, I skip way ahead. Uh, what is this like? 1,200 years? 1,500 years? Something like that. It's the Songs of Roland, which, uh, the Song of Roland, which was probably composed somewhere around the 11th century. This is kind of one of the French epics, you know, that we think about, like Beowulf being an epic and, uh, you know, kind of an epic of a specific culture. The Song of Roland tells of a battle uh, fought between a French knight who was uh, one of Charlemagne's uh, closest allies, uh, and he fights to, pre to prevent an invasion uh, of France by Moorish forces uh, in Spain after Charlemagne had gone south uh, to Spain and, and defeated a lot of the uh, Moorish kings there. So it, it has everything you want, I think, in an epic. If you like epics, like if you like, like I said, Beowulf, I'll mention another epic later. If you like those kind of epics that are based around arms and men in arms and chivalry and things like that, I think the, the Song of Roland uh, is excellent. Uh, and I, I really enjoyed it. And you get the, you know, the, the cameos from Charlemagne himself uh, shows up here. I would warn that the view of the 11th century French composers of the Song of Roland of uh, Islam and of the Moorish people, of Islamic people, are not positive views. And so you do get that uh, kind of cultural prejudice uh, built into the story. But I, I think the story itself is as good as an example of this kind of uh, epic story as there is. Along those same lines, at number four, I have the Song of the Volsung. Uh, this is kind of one of the uh, uh, epic uh, tales of the Germanic people, uh, for lack of a better term. 
This is where we meet the characters of Siegfried and Brunhilde, uh, and we see this kind of combat and warring between, you know, uh, small kingdoms uh, and small groups of people, and there's, you know, magic and witchcraft and curses and poisonings and all kinds of stuff takes place. I read this last year with Jack, I believe, Rambling Life Raconteur, uh, and I, I really enjoyed it, and you really do get, I think, it does help fill in a lot of kind of cultural things which you may be able to trace through uh, German culture and German history uh, or history of Germanic people and I, I really did enjoy it. And number five I have a book, I think it's the first only book on here that I've actually uh, reviewed um, and that is Praise of Folly by Erasmus written around 1511. Erasmus one of the great uh, thinkers, writers of kind of the period right around the time of the uh, Reformation, even though Erasmus never left the Catholic Church and always remained uh, a devout Catholic. Uh, in Praise of Folly, he is going to poke fun at uh, what he sees to be the weaknesses, the corruptions that have snuck into the Catholic Church. He pokes fun at the um, aristocracy, the, the kings, queens, uh, people of, of Europe and, and how they use religion and how sometimes uh, they, they're they not really being as virtuous as they seem. It's kind of phrased, it's kind of formed around the idea that Folly is a character and she's at first praising herself and then she uh, later on in the, it kind of uses what she said about herself and compares that to uh, some of these kings and religious leaders, etc. to kind of expose uh, the folly of what they're doing. And I, I just thought it was great and funny and her, um, excuse me, Erasmus's um, kind of dissection of church leaders and political leaders. I think there's still a lot of stuff there that's ap applicable today. So at number six on my list, I have Hamlet by Shakespeare. Now right away you should be saying, you know, this is not all that rare for people to read it. I would argue that Hamlet uh, is increasingly uh, one of the plays of Shakespeare's that is read less and less often. I think in part this is because there are lots of adaptations. There were lots of adaptations of Hamlet uh, in the last, you know, I don't know, 25 uh, 30 years and so it kind of became uh, something that was the source of movies and probably fewer people read it. I think that other of Shakespeare's plays have been assigned more commonly. Uh, obviously Romeo and Juliet but also Macbeth I think is assigned more commonly as you know like an assigned reading and I just think Hamlet is just an extraordinary work uh, telling the story of Hamlet himself who essentially believes that uh, his uncle murdered his father who and his uncle was in league with his mother and this leads to just all kinds of revenge and collateral damage and people being killed and you know it really is just a, a fairly violent play. The my it has one of my favorite scenes and that's when Hamlet's mother Gertrude comes in and describes the death of Ophelia uh, who is kind of like collateral damage driven insane by Hamlet uh, and then essentially uh, dies by accident anyway so that description of the death of Ophelia is just just brilliant and I, I think beautiful and there are lots of good great lines in Hamlet and so I think it's a good play to read uh, another book that is probably not that uncommon among people who make booktube videos and who read uh, for Victober is The Warden by Anthony Trollope. The Warden tells the story of a minor church official who, come to find out, has been his living, his income, is based on a grant that was made to keep uh, old pensioner men alive in kind of a, not exactly a hospital, but kind of like a, a home that they can live in. Uh, and this kind of brings up issues of corruption and he decides he can't keep that spot and newspapers get involved to expose corruption uh, and waste uh, within the Church of England and this leads to all kinds of complications and problems and I just think it, it is a, a fairly quiet uh, tale. Uh, the main character of whom his name has just gone out of my head, sorry, uh, is, is I think a, a truly great uh, character. Uh, a truly virtuous person, if not always perhaps as on the ball as you might want him to be. And if you're going to read more of uh, the Barchester Chronicles by Trollope, I think you get an introduction to a lot of the politics and some of the characters who will show up uh, in others of those works. The number eight on my list, I have Cousin Phyllis by Elizabeth Gaskell. This is actually shorter than Cranford. Uh, and in many ways, you know, I read Cousin Phillips, and, and when I first read it, I thought, well, I like Cranford better. But in part, that's because Cranford is funnier. But Cousin Phyllis is really, 
a beautiful, well-crafted, very short novel uh, in which a, a young man who's you know gone off to get into business and to make money uh, associates with or moves to an area where members of his kind of distant family live, uh, and he he you know spends time in the household of his uncle, I believe, where he meets uh, his cousin Phyllis. You know, you assume there's going to be some romance there, but then. Phyllis is introduced to a friend of his, uh, who not everyone necessarily approves of, and that leads to romance there. It's just, I just think it's a really beautiful, quiet, very well-crafted novel, and I don't see a lot of people talk about it. I have seen other people read it. And number nine on my list is probably a book that's going to surprise uh, most people if you know how I feel about Russians. Uh, in reading Russian novels. I have notes from Underground by uh, Fyodor Dostoevsky. Um, it is kind of uh, a study, and, and my understanding, I haven't, I haven't read other Dostoevsky, is it's, it's kind of a study of revenge and one person's almost maniacal decisions about, you know, revenge and who to hate and who's acceptable and you know, him spitting out a lot of his thoughts and ideas to various people, a young woman at, at some point. And I read it, and I, I, when I read it a long time ago, I remember being affected by it and thinking that, that it contained a lot of really uh, big ideas, a, a lot of exploration of a lot of very uh, kind of human ideas, even though the main character himself I found to be incredibly uh, unpleasant and, uh, in my, from my ori original reading, somewhat of a dangerous uh, figure, but uh, it is short, unlike most Russian novels, uh, and there aren't a whole lot of names to keep up with, which is always important for me. And then at number 10 on my list, I have another uh, Russian novel, and that's The Death of Ivan Illich uh, by Tolstoy. Uh, this tells a story of a happy, well-respected uh, Russian family man who has an accident, and that then leads to his uh, declining health, and as his health declines, uh, the people around him are kind of exposed, including his family members are exposed, their atti real attitudes towards him, his real attitudes toward them. In the end, he, he kind of decides that his life before had been somewhat of a sham, somewhat of a fraud, uh, and he wants to kind of die uh, as an honest uh, man. And I found it to be uh, a really, really effective, and I hope my memory of it is, is pretty accurate. And then the last book on my list, at number 11, I have Tom Sawyer by Mark Twain. Um, I see people on booktube talk about Huckleberry Finn, which I do think is Twain's uh, masterpiece of a novel. But Tom Sawyer is in lots of ways, uh, reminds me more of Robert Louis Stevenson's novels about young men, in that it's just kind of an adventure story, uh, in which we have this kind of, uh, uh, well, he's not exactly a rascal, well, let's just say he's not the most virtuous of young men uh, living in this small community who's best friends with Huckleberry Finn. Uh, who um, is, you know, knows a little girl named Becky Thatcher, uh, and the adventures that those three have together. I think it really is, to me, uh, a more affectionate kind of portrayal of small town American life, you know, around the time of the Civil War or the years right after that. Um, and I, I really, really enjoyed it when I reread it uh, several years ago, and I don't see very many people talk about it. Just as a heads up, you know, we are talking about Mark Twain, we are talking about a writer writing in the 1870s, I believe is when he wrote um, uh, Tom Sawyer, or The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, I should say. Um, and so there are racial stereotypes, uh, particular with the character named Injun Joe, is, you know, a caricature of Native Americans that is offensive, uh, and then language used to describe uh, black people and others oftentimes offensive. So, you know, be aware of that. If that's something that's going to cause you pause, then, you know, don't, don't read it. I would never tell you, you know, that you have to read it even if you feel that way about it. I found there were things in it that despite those other things were still admirable and still uh, enjoyable and that I, I enjoy Twain's writing there. There you go. There is my list of 11 uh, short classics that very few people read, or it seems like very few people read. Uh, let me know what you think about these works, or if you think my list is complete hooey in the con, in the con, in the comments down below. Uh, and as always, thank you for watching.